straight into the Ballymore, where we've got Champ is the three to one favourite. Battle over Doyen, who Andy you tipped uh, at, a, at a fair old price a few weeks ago, um, at five to one. Classical Dream eight to one. City Island eleven to one. Bruin up a storm, who I know uh, Joe you're very keen on. Uh, Birchdale fourteen to one. Uh, Angels Breath fourteen to one, who we don't expect to run in the race, and then sixteen to one Bar. Andy coming to you first, uh, and let's talk about mm. Battle over Doyen. Yeah, let, let's talk about that. Um, Lawless of Nace, novice hurdle, grade one at, um, at Nace um, back in January. Um, without shadow of a doubt, this is the best trial I've seen so far this season, both visually uh, and the participants that um, took part in it and, and the time figure as well. Um, I, I love the horse that won it, Battle Over Doyen. I think he's a proper chase. You look at him, he, he dwarfed through the horses in that race. He travelled well, got to the front two out with a good jump, and then once he sort of had to get his head down and battle and it, once he hit the hill, he, he really did grind it out. He's, he's a kind of horse that's got a little bit of everything. Now, he looks slow to the naked eye, but going back and doing the numbers that they, that they clocked that day, he, he was trapping along at a fair rate of knots. There was a main hurdle one by us called Valdia, won the first Noel Meads horse, who's a genuine two-miler. He was basically a second and a half quicker than Valdia from the back of the second last, and, and, and that, that Valdia's can operate at a good level as well. Circuit time was good, which is what something I always look for as well. That was four seconds quicker than Valdia. Um, and, the, and the further he went, the better he looked. And the fact that Gordon Elliott's left him off as well, I think that signals his intent. He, he, he knows he's got a Ballymore Hall, so he didn't really want to risk him. There was no point. He didn't have anything to gain by running him at the Dublin Festival. He'll go there fresh. He won first time out um, this year off the back of a 592-day layoff when he, when he uh, won a, a decent bumper. Um, he's used to running in a big field, so if there is a big field in this, he's fine. He's covered on that ground, on that front. He'll, he'll handle soft. If it went soft, he's got good ground form. He's a lovely mover. I can't really find any fault in him. He's, and, of course, the connections won it last year with, with Sam Crow as well. So um, I think he should be favourite. Um, with Champ, I do like Champ. Um, there's mixed messages with regards to that shallow hurdle form. You know, he looks at, look at the likes of Getaway Trump, yeah. um, Kate Sun. It looked a very good race it on paper. It looked a good race before, at the time, yeah. And, now, and obviously, yeah. brewing up a storm, maybe, maybe, maybe what have won next time out, he might have been Burstow. So that kind of counters that argument that we're not sure about that race. The one thing about Champ, which is the damning stat which kind of puts me off on two counts, is that all 16 winners of that shallow hurdle that have gone to try and double up in the Ballymore have failed. And there's been some good horses in the past. Yeah. Now, it's only a stat, and it's, you know, the, the stats are obviously there to be broken. I'm, I'm just putting it out there. But the other one as well is he's a seven-year-old, and only one seven-year-old's ever won it since 1971, and that's French Holly. So he's got two huge stats to overcome, champ. Um, and N Nicky Henderson hasn't got an overly strong race in the, in, in, uh, record in the race either. He won it with Simon Sig, but he's had some real high-profile blowouts. At the prices, he just wouldn't be for me. I think Battle of Doyen's a better horse than him. And the other one is Sam's profile. Now, Joe's already mentioned him, but I'd put him up as well. There's another two of them at yeah. that race. 20 to 1 sounds pretty He was 25 to 1. I still think 20 to 1 is an insult for this horse. Um, now, I think he would have gone very close to beating Battle Adoy, and he made two notable errors in that race. The first of them was four out, the first down the back straight, when he, 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 he got his hind legs caught in that hurdle. He was in third at the time or second, and he, he ended up going into the hurdle at a length behind the leader, and then he ended up dropping back about four or five lengths. He made the ground back up again, and then he made another little niggly error at two out. But I love the way he, he sort of got his head down, didn't put him off, he sort of like shrugged that aside. Um, and he reminds me very much of First Lieutenant who won this race a few years ago. Now Mouse, Mouse has already put him to one side as well. He hasn't run him in another race. So I think those two have obviously booked their ticket for the festival off the back of that run in January. Both sets of connections thought, right, OK, we've got a Ballymore horse. That's the best Irish form. Away we go. Um, and I think one of those two will win, hopefully for financial purposes at the better price. It's, <laughs> it's Sam's profile, but um, either way, I'd, I'd be devastated if one of those two horses don't go very close to winning. Tony? Uh, no massive opinion. Um, I think the top of the market is, is pretty much as they should be. Um, I wouldn't get, be getting involved at the current prices, that's for sure. Um, I think City Island's interesting. 11 was a bet fair at the time of, uh, of speaking here. I think that's fair. I think that defeat of Dallas to pick on early in the season um, is, is pretty solid form, didn't have much to beat last time, owned by the sponsors so you know you're going to get a run for your money there. Um, what I would say is um, I do know Nico's quite keen on bright forecast, um, I think he likes the horse, in fact he did, I did a piece of him before its reappearance um, 
uh, before it won at Newbury, and he was uh, he was quite positive about it. And I said, you know, this is an eighty to one chance. He said, no, he goes all right, uh, <coughs> and it duly won. He was landing some few bets there into twenties, and it's really progressed since. I think that second to Mr. Fisher um, and the Rossington to Main last time's a good performance. Uh, I think Bright Forecast could well be the overpriced one at forty to one uh, each way we're hills. So, if you are looking for a bigger one outside of the the front two of the market. Uh, I think bright forecast at 40s, um, that's all in with hills. If you want the safety net, you know, a lot of horses fall by the wayside, you can get 33 to 1 um, each way uh, with Bet365 or offering the court of the odds as well. So it's a toss up where you do that. You may want to take the safety net, but I think bright forecast for me. Great for me to hear you say that as I uh, managed to get a couple of quid on at 360s last week just before uh, when, 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 when it started coming out, he was going for the, for the uh, Ballymore. So yeah, like someone was snoozing somewhere. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah. So uh, so that's exciting. Hopefully, uh, <laughs> ne- hopefully you haven't uh, done Nico a disservice by putting him on a camel. <laughs> <laughs> We, 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 were, we, were, we were a bit scared that he was on the camel. He, he rode yeah. the camels. We were a bit scared that if he fell off, um, you know, that would be the, the headline would be Altior jockey um, injured in camel race. But thankfully, he um, he did okay. Or well, it would have been odd check of folds after loss. He gave it, yeah. He gave it unsurprisingly a very quiet ride at the back. Yeah. It was uh, yeah, definitely not off that day. His camel. Um, but um, yeah, so bright forecast forty to one, as Tony says, uh, with hills. Um, and uh, and Joe, who are you? I've mentioned Bright Forecast and Sam's profile earlier on. Um, I promise I'll come to you first. Uh, next, so right, you I, I'd echo those. <laughs> I think Bruno Up a Storm is a is a really good horse, but I I'd fancy him more in the Supreme than I would here. I think Classical Dream will turn out to be a very very good horse. He uh, he's come from the same owner breeder trainer as uh, where we got Benny the idea, and um, I know that Willie has always thought a good bit of him, um, and I think he'd probably appreciate the step up and trip. Uh, and there's a good chance, um, reading the tea leaves, that uh, Henry will split his two novice mares up, Sonoria and uh, Honeysuckle. Uh, he said last week that uh, it's unlikely that both will run in the mares novice. Here, I, I think they both need two and a half miles anyway. Um, if one of them was coming here getting seven pounds, it'll take a very good horse to beat either of them, I think. I think they're both very, very good. And Salceretta still enter for the race? She is. Um, she's probably more likely than not to run in the mirrors and obvious. Willie likes to keep them uh, to their own sex where he can. Um, she was unlucky the last day. We may as well just cover her off here. She, she beat Felix Deji at Limerick um, on St. Stephen's Day. And then she went for the two mile five uh, race at the Dublin Racing Festival. And um, she didn't fall. The horse in front of her hit, flattened the hurdle. And it hit the ground, bounced up and tripped her. So Patrick effectively just came off. She then did two circuits at a track and winged everything. Um, so she's a mare that I stuck my neck out at the time to buy. Um, and she is pretty good. She made her debut for us in this race last year uh, when she was knackered, um, when she fell at the last. But I, I do think she's good and I think she will come onto it on the Thursday. But she'll, um, she's a hell of an each way price, I think, in the mare's novice. She's way overpriced if she does uh, turn up there, and which I think she will more than likely. That was good. So if you're, if you're listening for, for the Wednesday preview, you're getting some extra insight there as well.